Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Fall Open House 2021 for Carleton University. Um, this is the session for the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. Um, my name is Jason Jaskolka. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. Um, and what I'm going to do today is uh, give you a short presentation to tell you about the programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, uh, as well as some of the unique features that our programs offer um, that you can consider when deciding on whether these programs are right for you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get started here. And first and foremost, welcome, bienvenue. Uh, it's great to have you joining us. And um, how I like to start these presentations is with this quote here. Um, and this quote is from Jamie Kasap. He was the uh, Google Global Education Evangelist uh, for the last 14 or 15 years. And the quote says, don't ask kids what they want to be when they grow up, but ask what problems that they want to solve. This changes the conversation from who do I want to work for to what do I need to learn to be able to do that? And that's really what we're about in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. We want to teach you all of the things that you need to know in order to solve the kinds of problems that you want to solve. So the way we orient this pr uh, uh, presentation here is around those problems, right? Each of the four programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering are great for students who want to solve certain kinds of problems. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in our session here today. So in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, our main focus is on teaching students how we can design and implement programmable hardware and software, and all of the components that communicate to accomplish some specific objective um, for some particular application that we have. Now, within the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, we have four Bachelor of Engineering degrees. We have Computer Systems Engineering, we have Communications Engineering, we have Software Engineering, and we have Biomedical and Electrical Engineering. And within each of these four engineering programs, there is a breadth component that means that students in all of these programs learn the basics of software and hardware design, but each of these individual programs has a specific depth component to it. And that means that each program has a different focus and that enables students to develop very specialized expertise in either software or hardware design dependent on the specific discipline. So in this presentation, we're gonna go over each of these four programs. And in order to see where these programs lie in terms of these hardware software spectrum, what we have is this little diagram here, where our hardware software spectrum to the left of this diagram are the more hardware oriented uh, programs. And to the right of this diagram are the more software oriented programs. And the blocks that you see shown in red are those that are offered by the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. That's this department. Um, and our sister department, the Department of Electronics, offers a few additional programs that fall much more to the left of this hardware software spectrum, more hardware oriented courses. Um, so as you can see, we basically run from biomedical electrical engineering that sort of spans um, electrical engineering into the more software oriented side of things followed by communications engineering, computer systems engineering, and then of course, software engineering right on the right hand side of this. So this is just something to give you a little bit of an idea of where you might be interested in terms of, do you like more hardware oriented uh, problems or do you like more software oriented problems? Now looking at each of these programs in a little bit more detail. So we have a biomedical and electrical engineering program. And this program is great for all of you that are interested in solving challenges that are related to the use of computer systems in a biomedical or e-health application context. So in this program, some of the things that you'll learn is an electrical engineering core, and that will be a basic foundation of electrical engineering. And then of course, because this is biomedical as well, there are additional courses in biology and chemistry. Then there are some courses that cover bioelectrical systems, modeling and control of biomedical systems, bioinstrumentation, courses in clinical engineering and medical imaging, 
and courses that cover biomedical ethics and research methods as well. In our communications engineering program, this is a great program for all of you that might be interested in solving challenges that are related to the interconnectedness of our modern computer systems. If you think about just all of the different systems that you may have in front of you, you may have a phone, you may have a laptop, you may have a tablet, you may have other devices in your house that are all interconnected to one another. Um, communications engineering is all about how all of those devices actually talk to one another. So what you learn in this program are the foundations of analog and digital systems. Uh, courses will cover topics related to wireless systems, both uh, uh, wireless networking as well as cellular networks, for example. Um, other courses that cover the foundations of networking and protocols, courses in communication security, as well as emerging technologies for all of the next generation secure wireless and internet communications. So think things like 5G and eventually 6G and so on. The next program we have is computer systems engineering. And computer systems engineering is a really great program for those of you that might be interested in solving challenges that are related to the design and the development of systems that are based on computers. That is to say that these are these integrated hardware software platforms. So what you learn in the computer systems engineering program are the fundamentals of software development. There are several courses that cover computer architecture and organization, courses that cover systems modeling and simulation, courses in real time and embedded systems, as well as operating systems and courses that cover electronics. And these are primarily digital electronics. And then of course, when we're looking at these hardware software platforms, it's important that we understand how they communicate as well. So there are courses that cover communications theory and computer communications. And the last program that we offer is a software engineering program. And this program is great if you're interested in solving challenges related to the design and the development of large and complex software systems. So in this program, what you're going to learn are the fundamentals of software development. And there is a strong emphasis on the processes and tools for developing high quality and maintainable software. So not only do we teach programming in the software engineering program, but we also teach the entire development life cycle for large complex software systems, which cover things from requirements engineering to software architecture and design, to testing of software, maintaining of software, and how to deal with evolving software. Of course, we can't focus only on the software without knowing a little bit about the hardware. So there is some courses that cover real-time systems and operating systems, as well as computer architecture and organization. But the hardware uh, flavor in the software engineering program is not quite as deep as it is in the computer systems engineering program. So out of each of these four programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, we have plenty of opportunities for our graduates. So I want to ask you, how many interconnected computer-based things do you use on a daily basis? And I alluded to this a little bit before, you may have maybe half a dozen devices just in the room you're sitting in right now that are all based on some sort of computing technology and that are likely interconnected in one way or another. So you can almost certainly spend much of your career after these programs working with these kinds of technologies. And some of these technologies may not have even been invented yet, and you're going to be developing computer-based systems that may not yet have even been imagined, right? So we think about what is the world going to look like five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now? And a very interesting way you can think about this is think back five years, 10 years, perhaps 15 years, and see what the technology looked like at that time. Um, so these technologies grow very rapidly. They change very rapidly. So you're going to be on the cutting edge of these innovations from any of these programs. So in the Faculty of Engineering and Design at Carleton University, we have a year one common core. And this sets the foundation for our students in terms of 
giving them a well-rounded university experience. So what this common core model is for the first year university experience is essentially any student in an engineering discipline at Carleton University will have the same set of courses in their first year. And what's unique to each of the individual programs are some common core courses that are called Fundamentals of Engineering and the Introduction to Engineering Disciplines. And these are taken by all engineering students, but in each of the individual degree programs, the Introduction to Engineering Disciplines will be tailored to the specific degree program that you're in. So for example, if you happen to be admitted into the Software Engineering Program, you're going to have an introduction to engineering disciplines for software engineering. And if you're admitted into the communications engineering program, that course will focus on communications engineering to give you really the foundation, the understanding, the motivation for what is this program really all about and how can you get excited about really taking off in that program and uh, developing the skills to solve all of those unique and interesting challenges that, that exist within those areas of study. So all of these uh, uh, courses, of course, are taken by the engineering students in their first year, and they provide you with plenty of opportunities to develop skills in teamwork and uh, more experiential learning skills while balancing both the technical and uh, transferable or soft skills that you may uh, require as you develop into a well-rounded engineering student. Um, each of the programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering are accredited programs by Engineers Canada and the Canadian uh, uh, Engineering Accreditation Board. Um, and what does this actually mean, right? So this means that each of these programs has had an independent verification of their program quality. And what this means is that having taken one of these degree programs, Obtaining a professional engineering license becomes more straightforward um, through Professional Engineers Ontario. And this is something that's becoming increasingly important in the technology-based fields, such as the four programs that we offer in this department. Um, so this is something that can attest to the quality of the programs that we offer and put you on a path towards obtaining professional licensure in engineering. Um, at Carleton University, we have a wide variety of clubs and societies. Um, so just to name a couple of clubs that are uh, affiliated with the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering is uh, the club we call CSOC, um, which is the Systems and Computer Engineering Student Society. There is also a Biomedical Engineering Student Society. Um, there is at the faculty level, the Carleton Student Engineering Society. We also have an IEEE branch at Carleton University. And then of course, there's the Carleton University Women in Science and Engineering. Uh, but these are just a very, very small selection of some of the clubs that we have uh, closely tied to our department. But Carleton has over 300 different student run clubs and organizations, and anyone can join those clubs and they cater to all kinds of different interests. So it makes it very easy to find others on the campus with whom you might share some common interests. And of course, if you don't find a club that you're looking for, there's plenty of opportunities to create your own. That's really how a university ends up with 300 plus clubs, is giving students the flexibility to create their own communities on the campus. So let's talk a little bit about co-op education. Um, so in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, each of our four programs has a co-op option. And we boast that there's 100% placement in many of the terms that we have in our co-op program. Um, the need for co-op students within the Ottawa and, and larger area um, is quite high. Um, so because of that, we can often find many placements for our students, which is a, a, a great opportunity for them. Now, when you enter into the co-op program, the first thing you can expect is that the co-op option will add one calendar year to your program. So a typical four-year engineering degree program with the co-op option, because of the way in which the co-op terms work, 
will add a fifth year to that degree. So in systems and computer engineering, we have a model of co-op that is based on a European model called thick slice co-op. And in total, this will give 20 months of paid engineering experience. And why it's called thick slice co-op is because one of the work terms is going to be 12 or 16 months long. And this is very beneficial to students because this gives them the opportunity to really get integrated with the organization that they're doing their co-op placement with. Um, in 12 months or 16 months, students can really get involved and be contributors to interesting projects within the organization that they may not be able to do in a shorter four month period. Um, with the co-op option, there are multiple entry points. You could be entered at the time of your admission. Um, you could enter at the end of year one or really any time before your first work term. Now from our department, there are a wide variety of co-op employers that our students uh, uh, go and work for. Um, on this slide, we just have a very small selection of some of the, the uh, companies or organizations that take our co-op students. And this applies to all four of the degree programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. So within the communication space, for example, you can see that there are a number of the telecommunications companies within Canada, like Bell and TELUS, for instance. Um, when it comes to computer systems engineering, companies like uh, General Dynamics uh, 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 take our students. Uh, biomedical and electrical engineering students have opportunities within Health Canada, for example, or within the uh, NRC. And software engineering students have plenty of opportunities within companies like IBM or Shopify um, in the Ottawa area. So just because these are mostly local to Ottawa doesn't mean that these are the only options available for co-op opportunities. Um, many of our students, um, particularly pre-COVID, were taking co-op opportunities um, all the way across Canada, as well as some international opportunities as well. Um, some of our software engineering students had co-ops with Facebook and with Google um, in the United States. Um, so the options are very wide and very abundant. Um, so that's something that's really interesting for uh, uh, prospective students like yourselves if you're interested in the co-op option that we have. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the labs and facilities that we have within our department as well. Um, so experiential learning is at the center of each of the four degree programs that we offer. And the majority of the courses that are part of each of those programs feature hands-on labs. And these hands-on labs typically are three-hour labs per course per week. Um, and in these lab sessions, there's typically multiple team projects for each of the programs. And this is really a, a nice feature because it allows students to apply, hone, and integrate their technical knowledge by working on medium scale projects. And these medium scale projects can be the kinds of things that you can include as portfolio material when you're looking for co-op jobs or when you're looking for a career at the end of your degree program. So in addition to gaining the technical knowledge in your courses, this hands-on uh, uh, lab component of many of your courses will also allow you to develop these transferable skills like teamwork, your written and verbal communication skills, as well as time and project management, which are very, very important for engineers. Of course, at Carleton University, we want you to be successful. So we have plenty of programs and supports in place to set you up for success. So within the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering itself, we have uh, uh, several different advisor roles from faculty members. Uh, one of which is the Associate Chair for Undergraduate Studies. Um, and there is, in addition, a program advisor for each of the four degree programs. So there are faculty members that you can talk to about the uh, various courses that are part of the program to help plan out if you're uh, trying to figure out some of your elective courses to help you get the education that you want to set you up for uh, the kinds of careers that you might want at the end of your degree program. 
Um, in addition to that, there is a dedicated engineering academic support office, and this is in addition to the university-wide registrar's office that can also provide these kinds of supports. Um, for first-year engineering students, there's the Elsie McGill Learning Center, and this is a center that's staffed by upper-year engineering students that serve as mentors. Um, and often this is a way in which you can learn from some of your, your upper year peers um, to get some tips and tricks on how to be successful in your first year courses. And what's nice is that this is run by students that uh, can help really uh, share their experiences to help you through that first year, um, which can be tough um, as well. At Carleton University, we have a Center for uh, Student Academic Support. And this uh, runs several different learning workshops throughout the year, uh, both online and in person when that's uh, allowed, um, as well as it provides one on one learning support sessions with uh, peer learning assistance um, and different kinds of development workshops. And finally, the last thing that I want to mention about academic support is that Carleton University has the Paul Menton Center. And this is a center that supports students with a wide range of disabilities, both visible and invisible. Um, so if that's something that is, is uh, needed, um, there are plenty of support offices on the campus that really help to set up this foundation for a successful academic career at Carleton. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the formal presentation part of this. So of course, we look forward to seeing you next fall. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing the presentation now and I'm really happy to answer any of the uh, questions that you may have um, about the programs that we offer in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. So I'm going to try to take a quick look at the chat here. Um, if there are any uh, questions that haven't already been answered. So here's one question that we get uh, quite a lot, and uh, I will be happy to answer this, uh, this question. Um, so there's, there's often two parts to this question. What is the difference between software engineering and computer science? And what is the difference between software engineering and computer systems engineering? So I'm going to answer this in those two parts. So the first is the difference between software engineering and computer systems engineering. So the difference between software and computer systems is that computer systems focuses on developing the hardware computing platforms that can be used to solve real world problems. And alternatively, software engineering focuses on designing and developing those software systems that execute on top of the selected computing platforms that the computer systems engineering students would be uh, developing. Um, while there is some overlap between these two programs, uh, very briefly and hence imprecisely, uh, computer systems engineering has less software and more hardware, and software engineering has more software and less hardware. Now, another commonly asked question, as I mentioned, is, well, what's the difference between software engineering and computer science? So computer science focuses on the theory and fundamentals to make tools, things like algorithms, right? So they look at generating this kind of knowledge, really what the foundation of science is. Software engineering, on the other hand, identifies where and how we can use those tools to practically solve problems to serve and safeguard the public interest. So this is really what the calling of an engineer is about. So the main difference here is in terms of where and how these different tools are being used and how they're being developed, okay? And additionally, I think it was mentioned in the chat here that uh, software engineering is an engineering program, um, which means it's also accredited by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. and uh, uh, computer science is not an engineering program, and it doesn't have those same benefits, of course. 
another follow-on question that typically comes up is, well, I hear that you can get a software engineering degree or specialization from a computer science department. Um, and while this is true that some uh, computer science departments offer a software engineering specialization, uh, it is not a software engineering degree. It is not an accredited degree program at the same level that uh, the software engineering program that we offer in this department is. Um, so that is really the main uh, difference between those different options that you may have in these kinds of, of programs. Uh, there's a good question here as well. Uh, can you specialize towards software in computer engineering towards your third and fourth year? Um, so what's nice in the uh, software engineering as well as computer systems engineering programs is that once you get into your third and fourth years, while well, each of them is going to, to uh, diverge towards their specialization, there is also the ability to choose elective courses. And the elective courses can be used to give you a kind of flavor in those degree programs. So if you're in the computer systems engineering program, but you really, really like the software side of things as well, um, you can choose more software-like electives um, to help give you a little bit more uh, um, uh, experience and education in those, those areas. And the same goes for uh, software engineering students. They can choose some of the more hardware uh, uh, focused or hardware oriented electives should they want a bit more of that in their program as well. And then of course, if you don't want that, uh, you can just continue on those, those paths as well um, that are offered typically by the program itself. Just going to quickly scan if we have any other questions that haven't been answered yet in the chat. So please feel free if you have additional questions um, to either drop them in the chat. I'd be happy to answer the, them here. Um, and if we're not getting any additional questions here, um, we're also going to be at our tables. Um, in our booth, um, feel free to drop by, ask any additional questions about the programs that you may have. Um, we're happy to talk to you about what we have to offer. So maybe we can wait just a minute or two more to see if we're gonna get any additional questions here. Okay, I see a couple more coming in here. Um, so there's a question here, is it difficult to manage part-time jobs and engineering studies as international students? Um, so this is a question that I'll, I'll answer a bit more generally. Um, so one of the things that an engineering program is, is demanding, and we're not gonna sugarcoat that. An engineering program does require a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, you have to work hard at it. Um, but at the same time, there are many other constraints in uh, a student's lives that, that we're aware of and that students have to deal with, right? Um, so what I'm going to say about this is that it's important as a student to find the right balance in your program. You have to balance your studies, you have to balance your social lives, you have to balance any of the work commitments or family commitments that you have as well. And this is not something that we can answer for uh, a general group of students. This is something that's individual to each of you. Um, and the students in my own experience that do really well in engineering programs are the ones who are able to uh, uh, find those balances and to manage their time and their expectations um, well um, early on in their program. Um, there is an, a, a period where you have to learn to adapt to the differences that first year engineering programs have. Um, but it really is something that if you can do this well and you can strike that balance, um, then you're going to have a, a, a much more clear path towards success. 
And of course, as I mentioned, there are plenty of support offices um, within the department and on our campus that can help you to find those balances. Um, there are, uh, so there's a question here, what are some good resources to learn coding on your own? Um, there's plenty of, of tutorials and uh, work uh, books and things like this online um, that can help you to, to learn coding. Um, something that I will mention here is that learning coding is more than just learning the language itself. Um, what I would recommend myself, um, if you want to really learn coding to be applicable for um, an engineering degree program, is not so much to learn coding languages, but rather to learn how to use programming and coding to solve problems, right? So the way in which you can really learn how to do this well is find a small little problem that you, you want to, to deal with. Maybe you have something that annoys you um, and you wish you had a more automated way of doing this, um, try to work through learning a language by solving those kinds of problems. That problem solving approach is really what's going to be beneficial to you in your engineering programs. So there are a couple of questions here in terms of uh, admissions. Um, so I'll just direct some of those questions to uh, the uh, admissions tables and the admissions booths that we have available for you here today. Um, they will have uh, a much more of a solid answer to many of your questions than I will be able to provide. So I really encourage you, if you have those admissions questions, um, to go and, and uh, talk to those folks. Um, and some of the links to some of this information are being posted in the chat as well. Um, so this is a nice question as well. Um, how do we need to prepare ourselves to get into communications engineering? Um, do I need a great expertise in physics? Um, so what's really nice about Carleton's first year engineering is the year one common core. And one of the main uh, reasons why we have a year one common core is to provide all of our engineering students with a solid engineering foundation. So what that Common Core is going to do is it's going to give everyone the, the level playing field, so to speak. So you will have courses that are, are covering topics in physics and these sorts of things. Um, and even if you don't have an expertise in physics coming into uh, first year, uh, by the end of your first year, you will have the foundation that you need in order to proceed with your degree programs. Um, so it's not something that's uh, a requirement to get into the program or to do extraordinarily well in the program. We are going to teach you the things that you need to know. Okay. Um, in terms of preparing yourselves for communications engineering, again, I, I really encourage you to think about what are those problems uh, that are faced by communications engineers these days? Um, and this is something that you can think about in terms of uh, many different aspects of what communications engineering is all about. How do we get two different computer systems to talk to one another? Um, the ways that we used to do this are changing very rapidly. How do we get our smartphones to communicate and to share files and to do all of the fancy things that they actually do? Um, that's what communications engineering is really going to teach you. Um, so gone are the days where we think of these big satellite radio dishes, and that's what communications is. Um, telephone networks are not the same as they, they were 30 years ago, let's say. Um, so instead, to prepare yourself, it's really understanding what it is that you will be learning in that program and the kinds of problems that you'll be solving. Um, so again, all of our degree programs are designed in such a way that you will get the foundation in the early years of the program that will enable you by the end of the program to really be able to solve those kinds of challenges.
So folks, I really want to thank all of you again for joining us here today. Um, if you have any further questions, um, please feel free to drop by our booth. Um, I will be there to answer some more questions as well. Um, there will be some current students as well that you can chat with about their experiences within some of these programs. Um, so please feel free to, to drop by and come and chat with us some more. Um, but again, thanks a lot for, for participating in this session today. And we do hope to see you in systems and computer engineering uh, next fall. So thanks again.